Hello my lovelies and welcome back to A Cookie Corner of YouTube. Today I'm going to take you back in time <laughs> in the life of a cookie who absolutely adored a magazine that was out at the time it was called Cloth Paper Scissors and I'm sure some of you will have heard of this. I loved it so much I had a subscription to it it was one of my favorite magazines because it had everything in it that I wanted to make, create, think about. And it was just really something that you couldn't get anywhere else. Cloth, paper, scissors was like a sister to Quilting Arts magazine, I do believe. Anyway, I was going through them a while back and I pulled out some pieces of things that I was interested in because um, you get to a point where you can't store everything that you've gathered in your lifetime. And I thought, well, at least if I go through the magazines and pick out the things that I really, really do want to do, then that will be getting rid of some of the other things, you know, that can, can go to um, recycling. Anyway, so one of the things, in fact, top of my list things, <laughs> was this particular project, and it is by Kelly Perkins. And it's fancy crow scrap dolls or fancy scrap crow dolls. I don't know how it goes. I mean, fancy scrap crow dolls, I think we'll go with. Uh, well, you can see why I might be obsessed. They just are beautiful. Look at him. Look. Look at how stunning he is. And um, I was completely taken with this way back in tw <laughs> 2007. But look. Look how pretty these crows are. <laughs> I'm just obsessed with them. I just think they're lovely. The uh, sky here as well, also beautiful. So I thought that I'll have a go at putting my own versions together. Now, um, I know on these sheets, Kelly does actually give you some options for ideas for patterns so I kind of took this one and I drew it out myself so she, she suggests you either enlarge what she's given you or you draw it out yourself so I did draw it out myself and that's what I came up with so then I photocopied it so that I could cut it out so I've got the actual original and photocopy that I made a pattern from and what I did then was I did so yeah, cut that out and what Kelly suggests is that you use either a wool felt or um, some kind of wool blend felt to cut your pieces out of. Well, I have this a roll of black felt from Paper and String. Also somewhere in my studio I have got some black 100% um, wool suiting somewhere. <laughs> which I'll have to dig out because I want to make more of these. Um, she said I've not even made my first one yet. Um, but I did cut out the pieces and that's what you end up with kind of as a, a blank. So let me pop my pattern over to one side. They're really simple. You just cut out two of these. Obviously you could do them both at once, cut them both out together so that you know they're going to match up. So this is my frontispiece and I had a go at putting some decoration on this one to start off with. I've got a little eye fastened in there to, um, to do something with. Although I may do what Kelly suggests in here is to um, paint it on artist canvas. I might try both ways. I'm going to try all the ways until I find a crow that I love. Well, I'm sure I'm, I'm going to love this one already. <laughs> He's so beautiful. Um, in my mind, he is anyway. So I have attached some pieces of batik fabric, scrap batik fabric onto here that I now want to further embellish. So I'm trying to decide what I'm going to put on extra. Now, I know I want to put some on this one. There's some hearts on there. And I think on my one, my favourite thing, you know, is stars. So I might just find some fabric so that I can put a couple of stars on there. Let me clear a space off here. Life is getting messy once again. It's always messy where I'm involved. Right. 
looking through some fabrics and wondering if I actually just want to do felt stars, which I may do actually. So let's dig into my bits of felt that I've got on the side of my desk. Perfect. <laughs> and so I'm going to have a couple of stars now. I've got this laundry pen, or do I? Yeah. I don't know. Decisions, decisions. I'll laundry pen it. Let's move him out of the way. I want two stars of vaguely the same size. So, I don't know if you've noticed, I do like a star <laughs> or three. So, let's get two of those going on. I don't want them to be matchy matchy. I want them to be, you know, as they are. So those two will do nicely. So I'm going to cut those out. You can do it with a a marker that will fade if if you're feeling scared about it. I I'm just so gung ho. Went straight in there. This felt is some leftover pure wool felt that I had. Um from something I made a while back so that's going to be good so I've got one star that goes on that wing uh, with these you can just go to town you can just go crazy with all your decorations and no just let your imagination run wild with whichever fabrics that you've got to hand. It's just such a simple and fun thing to do. And you know, I'm obsessed with corvids anyway, in general. <laughs> so I'm going to have a whole family of these at some point, I do believe. Okay. So now I've got two stars and I want a little heart to go on here somewhere. I've also got quite a nice spiral going on there. Hmm interesting so I might go felt again now I love my felt see what I can find for a little heart Corvid heart let's have a look <laughs> I think mm -hmm. maybe not that one just looking at the colours I want something A little bit more. Haha. <laughs> Perfect. That's what I want. So, let me draw a heart on here. I actually bought these laundry pens thinking that they'd be great to like, draw on fabrics. They are. They are a pilot laundry tech pen and for anything that you want to mark on or draw or write on if you're writing on things and you want to launder them afterwards um it's ideal it's what they use to mark kids clothes at school so you know that they can go through a fair few washes without causing a problem okay Ooh. My Corvid boy has heart. I'm going to go slightly to a centre there. Okay. So, what else I need for him is a beak of sorts. Um, I've just got my little book on birds here. It's actually my daughter's book on birds. I just nicked it because it was the side of the desk. And I was looking at crows. And there are varying beaks as such. So we've got rooks, jackdaws, magpies. <laughs> I am a, I am that magpie. See, there's no raven in here. I need to see a raven if I can. No, no ravens. How sad. Anyway, so... They mainly have black beaks, but I did notice on the ones that Kelly had, they've got 
kind of like a colourful beak, which I quite like. Basically, the, the premise of this, and I will just read to you what Kelly wrote on the first bit. It said, I salvaged fancy scrap outfits from exquisite fabric leftovers. Although they're not exactly the Emperor's new clothes, they still inspire the dignity that every blackbird demands as a birthright. And I, I love that. <laughs> It said, blackbirds are always adorned in black. I decided to turn their colourful demeanour into a fitting costume, since crows are scavengers, which makes absolute sense. Um, so what else am I going to add on to my crow? Well, I know I'm going to do some more stitching. I need to make his eye needs a beak. So do I want to give him an orange beak? This is a question. I might actually, and then I could stitch into it with black as well. So to get the beak shape, I am going to draw around the beak of my boy as much as I can, I'm winging it really. Um, that kind of goes like that and I'm going to cut inside the lines because I don't want it to overtake the black. I want to be able to see that black fabric behind it. So I'm cutting out on the inside of that line. Hopefully I get a beak. And I do. Great. I'm like him so far. Um, what I need now, somewhere again around me, I have my pins. So I want to my applique pins. I want to pin in place. So let's get these down. So you can see on the bits I've already put on, I've just literally done a running stitch to put them on there. And now I've got to decide where this heart goes. It might be there, just on, just off center, I think. Lovely. Right, now I've got to decide how I'm going to do the eye. And I was thinking, I've got felt, so I might just use that as I've already got it there. And I want to give the eye some kind of a centre. I have no idea what, what eye colour. I'm presuming they're kind of black, really. Yeah. Hmm. I can see what I've got. Could do a button. I could do a button actually. That might be a good call. Um let's see what I've got in my little pot. I've got a hundred buttons somewhere. I've also got this little pot with all kinds of bits in. So we're going whimsical crow. He doesn't have to have a black eye. Hmm. I might, might give him a blue eye. I think that's the way forward. Does he need an eyelid? I'll decide that afterwards maybe. So for now, what I'm going to do is to go away <laughs> and over sew these pieces onto my Corvid. Corvid! And put those in place and then I'll bring him back and think about all the other additions. Um, let's have a look at the ones that Kelly did. So we've got some beautiful fibres that can make some hair. That's a good idea. 
I like the idea of some decoration around the eye as well, some, some stitching to add in to that. Kind of like a bit of stitching around the face as well. So I think I might also add in there and you can add in beads and all kinds of embellishments. Oh, and he needs some feet now. That's another thing I could do. So looking around. <laughs> I've got loads and loads of fabric somewhere. All my felt is in a box. Can I be bothered to go and pick it up? No, so I'm going to help out. So let's just draw on some random feet. Let's see. We don't need, don't need to measure. Let's just, let's just go with it. I'm all for going random. That's one. And let's do another one. He needs two feet. He certainly does. Okie dokie. Right. This is a stiffer felt. It's the stuff I use for backing my postcards. Um, but this will help hold the feet shape while I stitch them on as well. Because they'll be quite flimsy, I would imagine, once, once they cut out. So with a stiffer felt, that actually will help, she said. Let's get some free teas on here. I also want to put some sequins on because I want my crows to have the best possible extravagant clothing that they can have. They have to they have to wear black. I mean, I'm, admittedly, I wear black quite a bit of the time. Um, but when I go out, I like to have some bling. So I've got a little foot there. And another one here. You can see I'm just making it up as I go along. <laughs> Literally just making it up as I go along. So I'm just going to carry on putting out this foot. And then the plan is to attach this together. Let's have a look. Perfect. So I'm going to sew these on and I'll be back and we'll add in some more decoration to them in a moment. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I've done a few things which I will go through. So I've attached all the pieces that I said I was going to sew on. So the stars have gone on each wing. The beak I attached with a little bit of black thread. So let's lift them up there so you can see. I did the eye and then I did some embroidery around the eye and I attached his button. He's got his little heart there. He's got his feet. And I did some embroidery just down the tail at the back. Um, I also attached a little ruff made out of some, um, some of this Lurexy fabric that's gone there. And I have stuck on and stitched because it would not have stayed otherwise the little Mohican at the top of his head. Um, what Kelly said was to cut a length of about six or seven different threads to about eight inches and then loop it. You could either stick it down with glue or um, you could use some fusible webbing if you wanted to. I just used a little bit of fruit stick and just then quickly as it was there sewed it on so that's the only part of my bird that's now like sewn around so you can see i've clipped it in places um, black is not the ideal thing to be sewn in the evening so i'm going to leave this until the morning now and then i can finish it up um, but what i'm going to do is uh, because i didn't want the wings padded and I didn't want the beak padded. What I have done, if I can show you, is I put some stiffened felt just in between those. So they're just going to be stitched around to hold them together, but they're not going to have any um, 
polyester filling in them. Um, and also on the wings. So when I stitch it up, I am going to stitch it all the way around, but I'm also going to stitch there, just down that little edge there, and also continue with the body around that way so that when I stuff it with the polyfill stuffing, it will go into this bit only. So there. So they will be separate because they've got some of that as well, some of the stiffening behind them, just to keep them um in shape really stop them flopping around um so yes that's as far as i have got with my crow boy for today um i'll be back in the morning to do a little bit more and um i did think about adding some beads and sequins in but i thought i would probably do that when i've got him all together and stuffed because it's easier for me to see where to place things once he's together <laughs> I really enjoy making him at the minute so I'm just going to put my black thread there for the morning and I need to get some more actually I have got another one piece somewhere um so yes that's the plan for the yarns I found in my old stash bag I had a little variety bag of these the reds I don't even know if Texier yarns are still going somebody comment in <laughs> comments if taxi yarn still going um many years i've had this probably about as many years as i've had this idea in my head to make a crow <laughs> so um yeah it's probably quite fitting that his hair is made from this particular variety bag so there um i'm going to let you catch up with wherever you're up to if you're making a crow with me that's even better news because then we'll have or we could be a magpie or he could be a raven or he could be um a jackdaw <laughs> or he could just be like a carrion crow so i'll be back pretty soon for you overnight for me so we can finish him off well it's the morning i'm back and i had a thought in the middle of the night <laughs> And I thought my crow boy needs um, needs a bit of batting, I think. I think the, the stiff felt is good, but I just wanted to put a little bit of batting in between the wings because I don't want him to have floppy wings. Nobody wants floppy wings, do they? So in between there, I've just ripped off a little piece of spare batting that I had hanging around, tuck the bits in, and I'm going to sew that in there as well. This is a make it up as you go along project, as you probably <laughs> you probably gathered. Do you have the midnight, you know, thoughts where suddenly you will wake up with an idea? It's like your brain's been working on something and suddenly it comes up with the answer, but very <sighs> inopportune moments. I don't know why I'm putting all these clips on there, but I am anyway. So yeah, a bit of batting is going to go in each wing. And I've just got this bit of scrap batting and I'm just going to rip off a bit. Maybe a bit bigger bit than that. <laughs> Told you it's a, it's a make it up as you go along project, this one. So I'm keeping the stiff belt in there and then giving him some... some batting i kind of like that well if it doesn't work it doesn't work and this crow will deal with it because he is going to be a strong boy he can deal with a bit of problem with his wings maybe <laughs> i'm sure it will all be fine i'm not going to wish him bad wings no one wants to do that so we've got a bit there and I'll still do the sew along to hold that batting in place so that's that's the idea also the stitches on the outside will help as well question is do I need to put some in his beak maybe <laughs> where's that small bit okay okay let's undo your beak and 
but let's see if we can slot a bit of batting in there as well. I can always tuck it in as I'm sewing because I am going to over sew from the outside now. I am unsure whether to do the over sewing in a bright thread or to stick with black. <laughs> And my brain didn't solve that problem for me overnight, so I might just have to start it off and then assess the situation because I kind of want him to be bright. He is bright and maybe the sewing together of him should be bright too. There we go. Okay, right, here we are. Now, if I'm going to do bright, do I do rainbow? This is the other question. <laughs> These are the questions that go through my head. So I'm just moving a big bag of polyester stuffing out of the way. Let's have a look and see what I've got in my... I still haven't unpacked this from travelling, <laughs> but it's a really useful um, thing I got from Vinted. It's uh, Vera Bradley. I don't know what it was intended use, the intended use of it was for, but it's great for tra traveling these threads around with me. So do I go that or do I go that? Hmm, <laughs> questions, questions. Or do I go Marrakesh? Hmm, I think Marrakesh is a bit thin, maybe, if I'm doing a day. I don't know. Sorry, you're all shouting at me through the screen. You're probably telling me what to do and I can't hear you. Um, I'm going to make my make my decision simple. <laughs> Pop that down there. Out the way. Uh, right. So it's either that or... Oh, I'm veering towards that. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay, so I'm going to thread up with this one. My trusty scissors. I was watching Susie Q this morning and she was, well, the video I was watching was showing all the goods she got from the, the stitch, stitch show at West Point. She had this fabulous um, ra giant rainbow rick rack. It was it blew my mind. It was awesome. <laughs> I need I need that in my life. Um, it's got some great bargains from there as well. I'm um, se severely impressed with what she got. And also the workshop that Susie did, um, which was doing like a, uh, a moon gazing hair, a uh, reverse applique. Fabulous. Go along to Susie's um, page and have a look on YouTube because it, it does look fabulous. Now, I have stitched the hair in there, so I might just start from this point here. So let's take it from the inside. I'm sorry it's black fabric, but that's why I probably am wise to choose the colour thread so I can see what I'm doing. So let's, let's get you in there little end of thread and I think I'm going to I think I'm going to blanket stitch I could over sew but I think I'm going to blanket stitch just because so let's do that let's do that start it off and lay it to one side it's really hard to do this under camera. Sorry, guys, if you're not actually getting what I'm doing here. I'm just starting off my blanket stitching, basically. These clips don't help. But I need, need the clips there so that I can see what I'm doing. I also need to see if this is working. Come on. It's going to be a little fiddly around areas, especially around this hair area. It's just going to get caught upon the threads because, just because. But it will be worth it. I'm seeing a whole family of crows in my future. And not just crows, there's going to be ravens and there's going to be magpies 
and jackdaws. They're all going to be here. I think I like that. I think I like the colourful thread. What do you think? I could do it in black, but I'm enjoying, I enjoy this colourful thread. This one is, uh, I think I got six of these. These are the wonderful pearl cottons. They're a little bit more pricey than the anchor variegated ones and the DMC variegated ones because there's only five grams on a ball. But the um, the changes in the colour occur more frequently and they do feel soft and nice. So I'm willing to pay the price for the beautiful colour changes that you get in the Wonderful. So I am a convert. I do still love my anchor and my DMC and all the other variations that I use, but converted to Wonderful. <laughs> Right. Okay, taking that clip off because that's just annoying me now. Once I get this on my lap and start listening to an audiobook or podcast. Oh gosh, sorry people. They want to make you feel sick. Just banging the camera there. I will be well away once I am sat in my chair having a little listen of a podcast or a book what are you guys reading at the moment um i have just finished one book called the tainted cop which was amazing and if you like fantasy sci-fi but also crime thriller it's definitely a book to try it's really interesting it's kind of like sherlock holmes um but in an alternate universe. <laughs> also, I, when I was away, I managed to buy another book in one of the series that I'm reading. So I might... Do you do this? I, I bought the book. I had to buy it. It's a signed copy by the author. But I also want to be able to listen to it when I'm doing things like this so I will read the book but when I get to where I'm making something like this <laughs> put the audio book on as well <laughs> not all the time I don't do this all the time but for this particular book I really enjoy listening to the guy um, reading it out but I really wanted the signed copy <laughs> so I got the signed copy and kind of looking forward to to reading that as well um what else as well what are you guys watching and reading and listening to i'm just thinking at the minute of things that i am going to be starting soon i want to watch the series three body problem that is on netflix at the moment but I have now been made aware that there are three books, or perhaps four books in the series of this. Now, the question is, do I watch the series first or do I read the books? Do I view them as separate entities? Because that's what I have to do sometimes in order to stop myself going off on one when I read a book and then watch the programme. <laughs> I have to um, view them as, well, this is a book and this is a film that are kind of based on the same ideas, but things are not always going to be exactly the same. So, yeah, another dilemma for brain. I think what I'm going to do is watch the series and then read the books. And that way I'm not annoying people by shouting out, that's not right. <laughs> every time something doesn't match up <laughs> to what it says in the book so I think yeah it's probably the best way around actually to be fair to people around me <laughs> oh dear the problems the problems oh I'm liking that extra bit of padding in his beak so that was a good idea 
Now I'm going to go around the outside of all of this and then I'm going to do, I'm going to use the black for the bits to separate out because they don't need to be emphasised. So yes, I think I'm doing the right thing. Okay. I'm liking the colour. Yeah, that was a good choice. Well done, brain. You did me good. Did me proud. Let me take you down a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So it's li literally just a back stitch around his beak. And when I get to the bottom of here, I am going to go and find a book or a podcast to listen to. And that will be a nice hour or so of stitching to do. I think, until I've got this all together. Um, I was going to tell you a little story as well. When I was a child, <laughs> many years ago, um, we had, we used to live in a, a working men's club. If you don't know what that is, it is basically a club that people pay subscriptions to and it's a place to go and drink and have some entertainment, meet your friends and everything. And my dad was the steward of the working men's club. So we lived in a little house on the side of the club. And one morning there was a knocking at the door. I must have been about four, four or five. There was a knocking at the door and I went to the back door. I couldn't see anybody. This is a little like window in the door. I thought, what's that? Anyway, went back and I was continuing. I had a picture book that I was reading at the time, but really loving it, enjoying my time. And then the knocking came again, kind of like a rapping on the door. So I went back again, opened the door and in smartly stepped a magpie. <laughs> Actually, truth, truth, truthful story. A magpie came in. He's obviously been a tame magpie or he's very, very clever. So he just walked in. And I was obviously very much entertained by this. And so I... I was actually on my own at that point. I think I wasn't, my mum was in a different room or something and she uh, was busy sorting something out. And I had a new friend and I had this magpie and I got back to my picture book and I was showing the magpie the pictures and he actually hopped up onto the book and we sat there quite happily <laughs> reading through a picture book. And... Then my mum came in from a different room <laughs> and she was, what's going, what, where did that come from? I said, he knocked at the door and I let him in. And she was not so impressed by the fact we had maybe potentially a wild bird in the room. And the level of her noise startled said bird and he flew up through the kitchen and landed on the bathroom door, which was slightly ajar so he sat up there and my mum was a bit shorter she was she wasn't as tall as I am she couldn't get this bird down and I think the only way we managed to get him down in the end was to get a bowl of sugar puffs and entice I'm not sure if sugar puffs are good for birds let me just say that this was back in the 60s late 60s and so that's what we had um so we enticed him down with some sugar puffs. <laughs> and eventually my mum managed to get him outside by leaving a trail of the sugar puffs out of the back door. Well, I was really sad because he was my friend and we were reading a very nice book together. Well, that's a little story anyway. Anyway, that's enough waffling from me as I stitch. I can hope you can see what I'm doing. Um... And I'm going to go and take this over to my comfy chair with my cup of tea and I'm going to finish off stitching around him and maybe stitch down the edges down here where his wings are to join the body up. And what did I say about the tail? Hmm. 
maybe I, maybe I, no, actually I could stuff the tail. That'll be fine. So it's just down the side of the wings and the beak there. I'll be back in a tick. So here we are. Here is the first COVID creature. <laughs> and I'm in love. Actually worked really well separating out the wings and the body with some black thread stitching down the sides there and down the beak. That really has made it, you know, kind of flap its wings and everything. <laughs> it's not necessary to do that, but I am glad that I did do it. And also that I put that extra bit of wadding in there as well, because that really does give that some stability. And so let's take you up a little bit if I can. So you can see the full glory. <laughs> I'm hoping a lot of you are going to have a go at making your own um, crow, scrappy crow, raven, magpie jackdaw creature. <laughs> I've got ideas to make a few more of these as well. What I did consider was, um, obviously you can have it loose and propped up somewhere, but I thought I might put a little hanging ring on the back and then you can kind of hang him on a wall or, or wherever you want to hang him really. Um, could make smaller ones than these. I know the pattern has the, the pattern that Kelly put on the back of those sheets. Uh, it was quite a small one and she suggested that you drew out your own uh, or enlarged her pattern. Um, I'm quite happy with this pattern, particularly the one that I drew. But I'm thinking and I might, might want to make an even bigger one. <laughs> so I'm thinking double the size of this and then it could sit on a sofa and I could talk to it. Not like I don't talk to this one already. We're already having conversations. Um, so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please pop me a little comment down below. What would you make? Uh, what colour choices would you use as well? Because obviously it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be personal to you, however your scrappy crow turns out, whether it's a crow or a, a raven. Um Everybody has their own ideas of what they'd like something to look like. And so I think whatever you do, it's going to turn out differently. It's going to, you know, we all have different things in our stashes as well. So I've, I've got all kinds of ideas for other bird friends that I'm going to make as well. Um, maybe with some thicker wool material um, to do the cushion idea that I was saying, the bigger one. Anyway, that's enough from me for now. Uh, I hope you are not too cold and rainy as I am at the moment here in Devon. It seems to have gone backwards. <laughs> uh, we're going, we, we kind of missed out summer. We had a bit of spring and now it feels more like autumn again. But hopefully the sun's not too far away around the corner and it will be back out soon. Have a great rest of your day. Have a wonderful week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Show me those thumbs. And I will be back here very soon with something else. Bye for now.